Hello and welcome back to Build a CubeSat. I'm Manuel and today we are going to talk about the rails for my CubeSat. So before we jump into the CAD and look at all the details, let's just talk about the overall design idea here for a minute. Um, I got these manufactured from PCBWay and as this video isn't sponsored or anything, I just paid for them. Um, the rails um, were $34 each and these clamps, which are actually two parts, uh, were between $32 to $38. So, I mean, $34 I think is really reasonable for the rails. These are a bit too expensive as they are right now because they have a bunch of really tiny features on them. So a thing to do in the future would be to um, reduce the complexity here a bit to make them cheaper. In total I paid uh, 470 bucks for, for each, which I think puts us in about the right ballpark cost-wise. So the whole idea is that you would have a really sturdy central battery compartment milled out of aluminum. I only have a 3D printed mock-up here right now, but what you would do is you would attach these rails to each edge and kind of bolt them in place with two bolts here. Unfortunately, I don't have a real prototype for this as of now, so I can show you this. But the other um, question I was facing was how would you then uh, kind of stack or attach PCBs to your cube set? And the solution I came up with was were these clamps. So uh, that's gonna probably gonna be kind of difficult to see, but let's give it a shot. So these, if I can get this in focus, yeah, that looks doesn't look bad. These consist of a fixed jaw and a moving jaw. And the moving jaw has these slanted features in the back that you see here. And these have kind of counter features in the back of the fixed jaw. And my idea is as you would, you would apply nuts into these slots here. And as you would attach a bolt to the whole thing, you would pull the moving jaw in and this would kind of exert a clamping force on the PCBs that are that go into these slots. So maybe I can show you, I can demonstrate this on the actual rail. Um, all of this is made to work with uh, M3 hardware and it can work with either the regular regular profile bolts or the flat profile bolts. Let me see if I can show you this. Yeah, so this one is the flat profile and this one is the regular profile. Uh, you can use either, there's more than enough clearance. Um, so what you would do is take two bolts, take two washers, put them where you want them and then just tighten down these screws. The nice thing with not having threads cut into the aluminum is that we can really apply some torque to them. Um, yeah, because this is a stainless bolt going into a stainless nut, so yeah, that's kind of a very sturdy connection. Even if you just tighten one of the bolts, it's already, I mean, that's not going anywhere. So let me show you with a PCB. Um, I don't have any PCBs that are the right size yet. So I just use this prototyping PC PCB for a demo. And as you see, it works in principle, but I, if I really want to, I can still dislodge this. So one improvement for the next iteration of the, of the moving jaw is would be to make this distance a bit smaller so we get a bit more clamping force on the PCB. Of course, you can not only have PCBs going in here, 
my idea is to only or to also have um, structural boards that would add some stiffness to the whole thing and maybe also something like um, a heat sink board whatever will be uh, whatever will make sense in the end so as a proof of concept I'm really quite happy with this um, I think it will allow for some kind of speedy and iterative prototyping which is my whole goal with this with this thing price wise we are in the right direction um, it will just need some some tweaks of course but uh, yeah so far so good so um, as I have I think I have mentioned in a in a previous video I'm not a big fan of thread locker like Loctite or, um, or Vibratite which is often used if possible at all I would to keep any sticky gooey liquid away from my cube set so what I came up with is the idea of using um, Bellwell washers and Aerotite nuts to, to mitigate the, the vibration I hope you can see it a bit better like this, but they basically have a tiny amount of cupping to them that basically acts like a like a spring as you apply force to them with a bolt. So this is one half of my vibration mitigation strategy, if you will. The other half um, is the Aerotite nut. Um, I'm not sure if you can see this, but they have a tiny little slit toward the top end there. And um, this upper part, this round part, will clamp against the bolt as it's um, fastened down. So my hope is that these two components together will hold the bolts firmly in place during the vibration regime during launch. I think it will make sense if I kind of um, compile a document with all the the hardware parts that I would recommend to use with this and put it on the repo. Also um, bolt lengths are another topic that I'm still figuring out. I mean these here need to be 18 millimeters but I th I'm pretty sure that there will be different lengths for other parts of the cube set. All in all I'm really happy with how this is going so far. Of course there will need to be tweaks to some of the geometry here um, to make the, the clamping force a bit stronger. But so far I mean this kind of works as I expected. Um, also the colors are just so we kind of see a bit better what's going on in this video here. This is not kind of the color scheme I'm going for. Um, I just you know pick different colors because they didn't charge more for different color anodizing and also you know the the algorithm kind of likes colorful things though so that's that's a side benefit um, so now let's jump into the cat and explore some more of these details here so first off i would have much preferred to design this in blender using the awesome cat sketcher plugin but it's still kind of early in its development and uh, it, i felt like it wasn't quite there yet. So we are here in Fusion 360 on my Mac because unfortunately Fusion doesn't run on Ubuntu. All of these files are of course open source. I will upload the Fusion files and the exports to send to the manufacturer or to manufacturer yourself if you so choose to to the repo and you will find the link in the description. So maybe let's uh, let's look at the C end here at the C plus end here first. Um, of course we have the obligatory fillet on the outside edge and the chamfer all around the perimeter. Um, here we have a hole for a um, deployment switch pin with a diameter of 3.4 millimeters. Um, the deployment switch mechanism will be kind of a, a bit of a challenge. I have this volume here it's, it's kind of small, but I, I would like to design a deployment switch mechanism that um, fits in here or also just a deployment um, spring because you don't need a deployment switch on each corner. 
in order to prepare for this, uh, I have been reading up on flexure mechanisms, which uh, is a really fascinating but kind of tricky topic. But yeah, more on this definitely in a future video. So, back to the profile. The deployment pinhole is located at the 8.5 by 8.5 millimeter center, which is the minimum uh, side length for the rails according to the CubeSat design specifications. So this will kind of ensure that we always have, that we always either contact the neighboring CubeSat or the deployer. So the most striking feature about the whole um, rail design here, I think, are these, uh, is this whole pattern on the outside corner, on the outside edge of this. Uh, in the previous um, CubeSat design specifications, revision 13, it said that the the rail should have one continuous surface on the outside, but in the current one, it allows for 25% of this surface to be recessed. So I think this should be a valid design. I didn't find anything in the CDS that would say otherwise, because like this, we only lose about 10% of the surface to the recessed bolt holes. But of course, that's just my interpretation. Um, I will definitely want to validate this with uh, someone who has more experience than I in CubeSat design. So the overall side length in this rail design is 12.5 millimeters from here to there, um, which is, you know, they're not massive, but they are, they're kind of sturdy. I mean, they do definitely feel sturdy, um, in, <laughs> which is a very unscientific way of saying this. Um, I think they will hold up to the rigors of launch, but I won't know for sure until I got them tested and certified. All right, these um, slots here, this is where the outside panels will go. They are sized to accept a stack of three 1.6 millimeter um, PCBs or aluminum panels, which are, will be necessary. Um, I think this will provide enough space to engineer a good solution for the, for the, for the PV, for the solar panels. Um, but that is also something I'm very much, you know, working on uh, at the moment and that we will discuss in a future video. What is also notable about this design is that it's completely symmetrical. So um, you see these, all these features are just mirrored. I think in the long run, this will save some headaches because you can't really use this in the wrong orientation. And it will also, um, I hope, lower cost in manufacturing. We'll see if it makes sense. As, as far, as long as it's possible, I like to design things to be symmetrical. The most complex part of this design is undoubtedly this inside face of the rail. So what we have here are these uh, 3.2 millimeter bolt holes where the M3 bolts go through from the outside. And then we have a bunch of alignment features. So there is this slot that is um, 1.05 millimeters high. And in the center, if I can navigate to this, in the center of these slots, there are um, holes that are uh, 2.55 millimeters in diameter. My idea is here that you can use them in various ways. The most simple way is to use shims. Uh, for example, I have some uh, brass, one millimeter brass flat stock here, which you can easily cut with a pair of sturdy pliers and you can slide these shims into these slots to get a really solid alignment. Or you can also just use a dowel pin. Um, these are not expensive either. Um, anything from 14 to I believe 16 millimeters will work. And they will of course add some structural uh, rigidity as well. What you can also do if need be, if for any reason you need to bolt something from the inside to the rail, um, you can tap these 2.5 millimeter holes. Um, that's actually the right pre-drill size for a M3 tap. Um, I don't foresee uh, this to be re real necessary, but the option is there and we all like to have options, right? 
So the clamp design, as discussed earlier, um, will need some minor adjustments. I have added some uh, chamfers and fillets so we don't get kind of sharp edges pushing down on the boards and cutting into them. Um, these uh, slots where the nuts go were a bit undersized and uh, installing the nuts was, it, I mean, it should be a transition fit. It was more like an interference fit and it was kind of a crunchy experience. We don't really want that, so I made these a bit bigger. But other than that, I think this next iteration is also ready for uh, ordering a new round of prototypes. So just to be very transparent about this, none of this is actually um, flight hardware yet. This is meant for prototyping. There are some key differences um, to what is written in the CubeSat design specifications. One of them being the surface roughness. I think it needs to be less than 1.6 micrometers according to the CDS and this is the default value on the most, the cheapest value on PCBWay which is I think uh, 6.3 micrometers. Of course this is absolutely fine for prototyping. The other difference being the an anodization. This is type 2 anodization which basically just inhibits corrosion, but the CDS um, specifies type 3 anodization, which is a much thicker layer. Um, that's also, it's going to have an influence on the tolerances because this is a bit looser than it should be probably. Um, but this is because I don't, um, I need to get a type 3 anodized part first to get a feel of what the tolerances should be like. So it's it's more on the loose side at the moment. But again, I mean for prototyping it will just it will work just fine. What else is there? Um, I uh, generally tolerances um, unfortunately I don't have a caliper that's long enough to measure the length of this thing. Um, the the other dimensions, the X and Y dimensions are spot on. That's uh, 12 point Four nine. That's twelve point four six. So we're good in this. The, the CDS specifies plus minus zero point one millimeters. I think this um, the the standard, the most affordable tolerance um, option on PCB way is. Let me check. Plus minus. Uh, 0.5 millimeters, which is substantially more, of course. Um, I would really need to get some better calipers to um, to measure the length. I don't think that this is plus. I think this is much more accurate than plus minus 0 0.5, but again, I will have to find a way to really measure it, to verify it. And of course, none of this has been tested in any way um, or certified in any way. So. Um, yeah, that's strictly for prototyping and developing this project further. So because of this, if I had to assign a technology readiness value um, to these parts, I would give it a 2 or 3 out of 9, which is really early days, but you know, step by step. Also, there are some open questions still that need to be answered. For example, um, grounding. I suspect it would be highly advisable to have the whole structure grounded um, for EMI and EMC, so electromagnetic interference and compliance. Um, but I'm, I've, you know, I have very little experience in this regard. And if the whole thing is anodized, I'm not sure how we achieve this because this surface is not conductive anymore. And it will be even much less conductive in a type 3 anodized part. So do we kind of have to laser some parts off and expose the aluminum? Or what are the ways we would achieve grounding for these parts? Um, if you have any ideas, please do leave them in the comments. Um, yeah, that's something that I will need to look into a bit more. Another idea I had was to get some of these parts manufactured and actually put up a little online store and start selling them for prototyping. Um, mainly in order to, as a way to support this channel, um, but also uh, to get this hardware actually out there in the world and get people working with it. Um, 
I, I don't think I'm going to have something like a Patreon for this channel because it's very much my policy to not paywall anything. So offering this hardware at a reasonable price, I think maybe a, a mutually beneficial way for supporting this channel. But please do let me know in the comments if you think this is a sound idea. I think that's all I have for today. In the next video we are going to talk about battery selection as a lead up to the um, EPS battery compartment design video that's coming up in the future. So thank you very much for watching. Um, let me know if you like this episode and I'll see you in the next one.